So as Kat mentioned, today's topic is on how to leverage Robot Cloud to create your own Mac at IBM program. First, some background. Last fall at the Jamf Nation User Conference, IBM took the stage and explained how they built a program called Mac at IBM. This program allowed IBM to onboard approximately 1,900 Macs per week. At the time of the talk, they had over 130,000 Apple devices, both Mac and iOS, fully supported in their system. What really got me excited about the Mac at IBM presentation is that here is a premier Fortune 500 company who laid out a business case that supports everything we've built into Robot Cloud. In my presentation, I want to stress how you don't need to be IBM to get the same benefits. Not only is Robot Cloud built on the same framework as IBM, it's built on the Casper suite. Robot Cloud can be deployed across tens, hundreds, or even thousands of Macs in a matter of hours, days, or weeks. One caveat, I do not represent IBM. What I'm about to talk about, I obtained from attending the IBM talk at the Jamf Nation User Conference in Minneapolis last fall. You can watch the talk online at the link posted here, the frgt.co slash mac dash at dash IBM. You can watch the full presentation. Before we talk about how IBM did this, let's back up and look at why did IBM do this? What were their business goals? IBM was looking to boost productivity and build employee engagement. They discovered that to retain top talent and key employees, they needed to give employees a choice in the technology they use. To provide choice, they needed to build a culture that supports Apple devices. Furthermore, they realized they needed to align IT delivery with the expectations of employees using Apple devices. They needed to redefine the perception of IT. A lot of people think of IT as an enforcer, and that's a negative connotation. The Mac at IBM program is built to position people to think of IT as an enabler. And that's also a big theme we have here at Robot Cloud to enable Apple device users to do their job and get things done. Now, when IBM came up with this idea, did they receive any pushback? And the answer is a resounding yes. There was, there was a big pushback. They were told Macs are too expensive to purchase and too challenging to support. They were told that IBM would have to refactor their application portfolio and retrain the help desk. You can imagine IBM with over 500,000 employees, they have a large number of applications that they use. So at the end of the day, the sentiment was, we wish we could give people Macs, but we just can't afford it. However, they were allowed to do a pilot program and, and obviously that pilot program was successful and we'll talk about, talk about that now. How did they accomplish this? And this is a very high level, but IBM achieved their goals with three simple concepts modern systems management, modern tooling, and modern IT policies. And let's uh, look at each of those just a little bit here. So let's talk about modern tooling. What does that mean? Current IT systems management, the tooling and the techniques, reflect thinking of 15 or 20 years ago. Modern best-in-class tools are less restrictive, more secure, and deliver much-needed automation. And here's an example that we see a lot, and Chad can uh, vouch for this. In fact, recently, this is a quote from somebody who reached out to us. They said, our security team continues to take hits in audits for our Mac computers that are not bound to the domain. So they wanted us to help them bind to the domain. Now, we can do that. Robot Cloud has the ability to automate the bind of a Mac to Active Directory. But the question is, why do we want to do that? Binding a Mac to Active Directory does not make it secure. It's what you do with the bind that makes it secure. And there are actually better ways to get the same results today. IBM does not bind to Active Directory. And I want to repeat that. IBM does not bind to Active Directory. Chad, did, you were there with me. Did you hear them say that? Uh, correct. Yeah, they do not. Okay. I, I take that as a clear cue that if they can manage over 130,000 Apple devices without Active Directory, then you can too. Okay, uh, self-service tools. That's another area where they made improvements in self-sufficiency and a new support model, primarily around automation, excellent self-service tools, and a new customer satisfaction-driven help desk. This all fostered self-efficiency, resulting in happier, more productive, self-sufficient employees. And self-service tools are a big part of Robot Cloud. With Robot Cloud, we include self-service, which is part of the Jamf Casper suite, tool. IBM uses it. In fact, IBM only uh, allows their 
applications to be installed through self-service. At IBM, at IBM, the applications have to be vetted before they can be put on a machine. And in order to get them on a machine, uh, it's all done through self-service. And just like IBM, you can do that with Robot Cloud. Robot Cloud, in addition, has a support menu and dashboard, which can also be used by anyone on the Apple platform. Modern devices is another uh, point that IBM made. Underpowered workstations, you can think of this as the old uh, Windows machines that need to be replaced. So you can either give them a new Windows machine or if they choose, they can get a Mac. Uh, but the point is underpowered workstations really just shift expenses from spending money on a new workstation, meaning you're going to spend more time on support and lost productivity cost if you force people to continue using old hardware. So their initiative was also to give them new hardware. And the total cost of owning a Mac, they found out, is actually lower and employees are happier and more productive. Anyone who's afraid that Macs cost too much, IBM has said that one of the primary findings in this experiment is that by switching from PCs to Macs, they are saving $270 per employee and over 130,000 people. You can imagine what that's like. A few items to consider when building your own employee choice program. Uh, first of all, app compatibility. Uh, you know, are the apps that you're currently running on Windows machine going to be compatible on the Mac? You know, a great way to do that today because you most likely have a lot of, um, or, or sorry, not a lot, you, you may have a handful of Mac users out there and you just want to scale that, is first you want to enroll those Macs into a system like Robot Cloud so you can see the app's inventory and the version. You know, are they running Office 2011 or Office 2016? What applications are the Macs currently using? And then look at the Windows machines as well. What, what applications are they using on the Windows side and how will that translate to the Mac? Will they continue to use the app in a web browser or is there a web browser option? Uh, or maybe there's no option. Maybe you, you still have to um, use terminal services to connect to a Windows machine or run a virtual Windows machine on your Mac. Th those are not ideal solutions, but if you you know determine that there, all of your applications absolutely have to live in Windows, then obviously an employee choice program is probably not for you. IT delivery model. This is a big one. Uh, IBM proved that what works great for Windows does not work well for the Macs. They don't bind to AD. They don't use Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager. They don't use Microsoft Windows Intune. They, they are not trying to shoehorn their Macs into a single pane of glass built for Windows. They're using leading tools, the Casper Suite, built specifically for Apple devices. And by using native tools, they were able to accomplish a number of things. One, they were able to reduce hard drive encryption cost by using FileVault. They were able to reduce antivirus cost by using XProtect. They were able to reduce support and lifecycle cost due to self-service tools and a reduced help desk staff. They were able to reduce what they call preload and delivery time. And they did this by abandoning imaging. There are no images to build or maintain. Chad, can I get another uh, support from you on this? No imaging, because that's something you and I talk about a lot. Why does anyone image? Now, there, there are use cases for imaging, but in most cases we run into, it's not a valid one. Would you agree? Uh, I would agree. In a one-to-one -one deployment, um, the, there really isn't any uh, need or merit if you are uh, looking to do something in a uh, lab, say in education, then there's, there's still a use case, I could argue. But other than that, no, don't, yeah, don't do it. Yeah, great. <laughs> Uh, another thing that IBM takes advantage of, which we take advantage of here, is the Apple Device Enrollment Program, or DEP. Uh, it's used to auto-enroll Macs at IBM. That way they can deliver a shrink-wrapped box to someone anywhere in the world. That uh, employee unwraps it, unboxes the device, turns it on, gets set up, and it's all it's automatically connected to the IBM system, and you can do that through Robot Cloud as well. They also use Crash Plan for their backups and restores, which is something we use and recommend. Productivity gains is also a benefit they they promoted in both IT delivery and employee workstation performance. And finally, increased employee satisfaction. People love their Macs, and they love the ability to have a choice in the technology they use. So that resulted in an increased ability to attract and retain top talent simply by giving people a choice in the technology they use. Hardware cost. IBM pretty much once and for all debunked the myth that Apple is too expensive to support and offer to employees. However, in doing so, you do need to consider that the initial investment in Mac hardware will be slightly higher than in the past with Windows hardware. So your overall cost will be reduced, but that initial investment may be higher. Support and user training. Uh, not every organization has an experienced 
Mac administrator on staff, or you may not have enough of them if you're planning on giving your employees choice. Uh, and, and forget computers, we have professional services and a support desk staff that can help with that. So Robot Cloud is the tool, but we have a team here who can help you make that transition. And then uh, security standards. If you have a, a modern IT delivery model in place, which we talked about earlier, then getting better security standards is a lot easier. With Robot Cloud, we've also created a security standard for hardening a Mac against outside intrusion. While you could manually configure most of the items on the security list, it would take approximately 90 minutes per Mac to implement. And with Robot Cloud, this happens automatically plus Robot Cloud ensures the settings remain unchanged. So there's a lot you can do around security with a modern IT delivery model. So in summary, IBM debunked every status quo reason for denying Macs at IBM. And uh, the whole reason we wish we could give people Macs was replaced with every Mac that we buy is making and saving IBM money. And I believe you can do the same and of course, we'd prefer you do it with Robot Cloud, but if you could build it yourself, I suppose, uh, like IBM did, if you have 100,000 Macs. But if you don't quite have that many, then I would seriously consider Robot Cloud for yourself and for your customers. That ends my presentation, so I want to open it up to Q&A. Kat, do we have any Q&A? Okay. Does Robot Cloud work with DEP and VPP? Absolutely, yes. Apple has a device enrollment program, which IBM uses and, and Robot Cloud can work with, which allows you to link any Apple device you purchase automatically to a management system like Robot Cloud. Uh, and in the same way that you can link a device to Robot Cloud, you can also enter the volume purchase program and any software you buy through that program can be attached to Robot Cloud so your devices are automatically licensed. Uh, depending on the software, not every software package participates in the VPP program. Next question I show is how do you auto but security standards without binding to AD? Yeah, good question. So if we're not binding to AD, how are we you know, enforcing those security standards? And, and Chad, is, is that something you could maybe speak to briefly in a, in a high level? How oh, do sure. we uh, enforce security standards? Well, it definitely depends on the standard itself. Uh, if you're talking about uh, like password uh, policies, uh, things of that nature, when it's set on a Mac, when it's a local policy, there's uh, something within the Casper uh, Jamf framework called extension attributes. So we may have a, uh, an action that comes onto the Mac and sets these things, but then we also have a corresponding attribute that reads that data and ensures that that data is uh, showing to be compliant, making sure that all the local accounts do have a password on them, uh, making sure that uh, you know, uh, SSH is either uh, on uh, only for administrators or if it's off entirely based on the requirement, and even uh, real basic things such as uh, screensaver uh, settings, uh, time for the uh, uh, require a password on wake, those kind of things. Um, they're all checked uh, because they're all readable objects on a Mac. And if they fall out of compliance, then they are reset. Or if Apple allows, which is kind of in flux right now, um, they're set uh, hard coded as in grayed out, as in an administrator can't even modify them. Um, so it doesn't require an audit uh, for some of those items that are fully supported by Apple in terms of uh, locking them down. And uh, in most cases, or maybe all cases, we can also get alerted to any changes, correct? So if we're seeing a pattern, we can reach out to the individuals or groups of people and say, you know, here, here's why this is in place and communicate with them about the need for the security standard. Exactly. Yeah, there's, um, it, it's rare, but sometimes there is the human element that uh, does need to be addressed especially if your users in your environment are administrators and they, uh, they like to Google around and find different ways to, like, oh, I don't need to be managed in this way, and they try to peel it out, or maybe they make things worse in the attempt, don't know. So yeah, you definitely, there, there could be some pushback if uh, they don't like the setting that's applied, but ultimately the framework will self-correct, and if they continue to do it, then yes, the conversation will need to be had because you know, clearly there's not an understanding of what the employee should be doing. Right, and, and obviously the communication ideally would happen before even implementing the security standards so everyone's made aware of, of why this is happening and what the benefits are. But that's always a challenge because we're, we're also busy today. We don't, we don't have time to listen to silly security talks. Okay, that, uh, that joke didn't go over very well. So I'm going to end the presentation right now. Kat and Chad, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you next month.